Hello, hello. This is Corrine from the North Balford Library with Lakeland Library Region, back with episode 17 of Board and Busters. I hope you guys enjoyed sewing last week. I thought it was something a little bit different to do. But if you didn't, we are going to go in the complete opposite direction this week. Today, we're going to be doing simple, but with the strong possibility of messy, science experiments. We're going to do three different experiments. We're going to start off with walking water because that one takes a little while to react so we can check in on it. Then we'll do elephant toothpaste for a big reaction and finish off with seeing which candy reacts the most with pop. Let's get started. So with walking water, all you need are three containers, paper towel, water, and two colors of food coloring. So with the walking water, we're going to fill two of our containers halfway full of water. warm so I do have uh, something to be able to grab it with it's a little pot holder so what we'll need for this is a small jar of glass hydrogen peroxide yeast dish soap and food coloring Hydrogen peroxide naturally breaks down into water and dioxide, or oxygen too. Yeast speeds up the process, the soap catches the O2 so that we can see it, and the food coloring makes it look cool. So set your jar in the middle of a pan to help catch the toothpaste. I've also got my thing around here to help catch it, and nothing around, so we'll see how messy this one gets. So we're going to mix a half a cup of peroxide. It does call for 6%, but I can only find 3%, so it might change how this reaction goes. So. so there's a half a cup of peroxide, and then we need three, four drops of food coloring. There we go. 
out and a squirt of dish soap. Okay. Now in a separate container, we want two tablespoons of warm water. One, two, and a teaspoon of yeast. together and then we need to let this sit for about a minute well to swirl it together for about a minute to help the yeast kind of start to react starting to smell yeasty. All right, and now we're gonna pour the yeast mixture into our glass and let's see what happens. That's kind of cool. Let's see if I can bring you guys a little bit closer for this. Can you guys even see the cup anymore? <laughs> so a quick check-in on our walking water. It's been about 15 minutes, and you can see the blue is starting to drip into this, the middle one. The red is still going up through the um, paper towel. you can see that it's coming up through the paper towel. We'll check in on this again after our next experiment. So with this one, we're gonna do proper scientific method. So if you look at the sheet that's on the side there, hopefully that points correctly, it goes through the scientific method. So you're making, an, you're making a hypotenuse, doing the experiment, looking at the variables, all of that. So with this one, we're gonna do three variables and we're gonna see which candy produces the biggest reaction. So what you'll need for this experiment are Pop Rocks, Nerds, Mentos or Scotch Mint candies, and then bottles of Coke or Pepsi or Cola. And then some balloons and a funnel. So I'm gonna show you how to set up for each experiment and then we'll film each individual one so you can watch and see what each individual one does. So to start off with, you need to take your balloon and put your funnel into it, nice and secure. So that's a little bit easier to fill your balloons with candy. So I'm gonna start with the nerds. Got it open. Have it on this end. I'm basically gonna do the funnel about half full. Stick it in front of the first bottle. And now I've got some off-brand Pop Rockets. Or Pop Rocks, I should say. You would not believe how hard it was for me to find brand name Mentos and Pop Rocks. Actually, that's why the Pop Rocks I had at home. All right, so I'm going to cut these open. I'm 
probably do a couple of them at once, just to make it easier to fill my uh, funnel up. Okay, so I've got my nerds full, I mean my pop rocks full. And then we probably won't need the funnel for this last one. We'll just stick them into here. I'm just gonna stretch this a little bit to make gain the mentos in there a little bit better. Okay, so I have three Mentos in here. So then what you have to do is open your pops. And these I've kept them as still as possible so that they were nice and flat. my mess a little bit just because I am inside. I'm actually going to empty these about halfway so that they're only till about there just to give it a little bit more room for it to fizz up and out. Okay now that our bottles of pop are ready we're gonna very carefully make sure the candy is all down at this end, open this up and put it over the top of each of the bottles and then we'll do them one by one. All right, so we'll decide which pop has the biggest reaction by which one has the biggest balloon afterwards. So. We'll bring the nerds up. I'm going to hang on to the bottom of this and then shake the candy in. And then we'll wait till it kind of stops. Oh, I didn't get all the candy into it. There we go. So this one will kind of measure against my palm and so it completely covers my palms and most of my ring finger. Probably could have gone away with having leaving a little bit more pop in here. But again, I was kind of afraid, afraid of the mess because I'm doing this inside. If I was doing it outside and had more messy clothes on, I would have left it on. All right, so now let's check out the Pop rocks. And then make sure to. Oh no, I think this had a hole in it. I can hear it. I 
think this one, this balloon might have had a hole in it. Or I put the this on a little bit more firmly than with this one, so let's see if that makes a difference. It's still fizzing, but yeah, look at the size of that compared to this one that's even displayed a little bit. Okay, now let's see if we can get the Mentos or the Scotch mints to work. So I'm gonna make sh sure that it's up over this, holding it. Oh wow, look at that, it's already starting to go. I'm trying to see if I can get this other mint to go in. There we go. Oh, here it goes. We still got one more mint to get in there. Maybe. There we go. No, nope, it's still in there. Okay, note to self, uh, keep the mints in the main part, in the, there we go. So this one, it shot up more this way rather than making it big, but it's more firm than these ones were. And it's still fuzzing. We can still hear the pop rocks going. If you look, you can see the mint in there foaming. This one, you can't really see the pop rocks. They, they're still dissolving. They're kind of, you can hear them. And then these were the nerds, and you can see them all at the bottom. So what do you think would happen if we used more candy or more pop in these? Would the reactions be bigger? Or do you think they would be about the same? Let's go check in our, on our water walking experiment one more time and we'll close out this. Okay, so it's been about 40 minutes and you can clearly see that the blue has come into the middle one and the red is coming. Technically blue and red is supposed to make purple, but I guess because this is a little bit more of an orangey color, it made green. And so that is walking water. Aren't science experiments fun? I hope you guys had a great day and you enjoyed these science experiments and I hope you all have a great rest of your day and stay safe. See you next time. Bye!